so uh, welcome everybody to the show. This is the first time we do something like this. Our, our, our idea was, you know, we've had a lot of questions recently from people asking. We've seen this event. It looks cool. The graphics are cool. It looks uh, like something I might be interested in, but what is it? And so we're hoping that we can throw this Q&A show together and uh, maybe answer a bunch of your questions. And hopefully you come away from uh, watching this with uh, a lot more clarity and hopefully a lot more excitement for what we've got planned in just about 10 days now. So um, just some quick introductions. My name is Sean Burney. I'm the esports director at St. Clair College. Um, and uh, I guess um, just been involved in grassroots esports in the Windsor, Essex County area since about 2010. And on the periphery, there's always been this like these t this TCG community as well. And there's a lot, been a lot of overlap. So um, over the years, we've met these other people here in the chat um, through various means. So I'll, I'll, I'll throw it over to uh, Jeremy to introduce himself. Hey guys, I'm Jeremy. I'm the owner of the CG Realm. Uh, we do TCGs and other things. Um, yeah, so when Sean came and seen me, this just was a great marriage to put these two together. And so then we put a team together and I'm gonna pass it over to our other co-host. Is that me? Brent? Let's That's go to Brent. Guy. <laughs> Let's go to Brent next. <laughs> That's you, big one. guy. You're next in line. <laughs> yeah, I guess on screen. <clears throat> okay, so I'm Brent. Uh, I own uh, Hidden Trail Experiences, or m possibly better known as Hidden Trail Escape Rooms to most people. Um, yeah, the event sounded cool to me. I've uh, known Jer for a long time. I, uh, we have a beautiful father-son relationship, and so when he told me, that uh, Sean and him kind of cooked up this idea. I thought it was awesome, and I wanted to get on board. So I think it's uh, it's gonna be awesome. And this is Val. and then uh, finally we've got Valerie. We're a little bit out of order here, but yeah, I'm <laughs> Valerie. I work at Sinclair uh, as the marketing and events manager. Um, aside from from that and working on the summoning, I I work on a lot of tournaments and grassroots events. Um, outside of that and. Kind of my main background was in esports tournaments and grassroots stuff like this. So doing something like the summoning is awesome. I also am just a big Pokemon TCG collector myself. So this is my excuse to spend money in 10 days. <laughs> I think a bunch of us are going to be doing that, unfortunately. I'm hoping I have yeah. no time. In a way, I'm hoping there's a bunch of issues with this event so I can save money from my, from my own wallet. So we'll see how it goes. I'm going to be doing um, it. I'm going to overpay my staff so that I can have time <laughs> to spend money. That's that, that works out too. Yeah. All right. So there's our brief introductions. The next thing, I guess, we've already touched on it a little bit, but I'll throw it over to Jeremy. Just give everybody who is watching a little bit of a background on, you know, how the event came to be. All right, guys. So uh, Sean stepped into the CG realm <laughs> one day to pick up his Pokemon that had been sitting there for almost a full year. <laughs> so he came up with this idea and he said, hey, listen, we want to throw a gaming event at the college. How can we pair TCGs with our esports? So the ideas just started flowing. We brought Brent on. Uh, Sean Brent bought, brought Val on. Sorry, guys. Uh, and we kind of put the team together. From there... Uh, we wanted to put together an experience for the gaming community. So there was a lot of ideas kicked around, things like that. We talked about vendors and how we're going to get vendors and how we're going to get this and how we're going to get that. And uh, for some reason, Sean mentioned that we had the facility for a very reasonable price of zero dollars. <laughs> So I missed that when we were going through it. We were going to set up vendors and charge and and go from there like a traditional uh, Comic-Con or event or things like that. And then the one day I just came up with a concept. I said, hey, what if we just threw everything out the window? We did zero dollars. We got a prize that was guaranteed of ten thousand dollars plus. And we did that by giving away the tables, the vending tables for free, but asking in return for sponsorship from the community. The sponsorship uh, could range from any any sort of price from 
traditionally it was around 300 is our lowest sponsor and our highest sponsor right now is around 3500 um and that's basically how we built the prize pool that's how we structured this uh we put together a ton of different events a ton of different attractions and uh that's basically how it came to be so Oh, I think maybe he's muted now, but I think we did get the end of that. <laughs> um, all right, so the next question, I mean, yeah, I, I think all of us, you already heard it from Valerie as well. You've heard it from Brent. We happen to all be, like, Jeremy's probably mad in a way because the three of, the other three people here are all Pokemon, Pokemon <laughs> people. <laughs> it's, it's, he wants to just sell MTG and have magic tournaments and stuff, and meanwhile, yeah, we're going in there. I just... Pokemon cards right here in a box, <laughs> sorted. <laughs> I could like turn oh, my we, camera around and we like, sell po got like my Pokemon shelf over here. <laughs> Where is it? There's my Pokemon we, shelf. We my EGE Pokemon. shirt we, over there. We do Pokemon. Come on, man. And my kids do Pokemon. <laughs> but I left it to other people in the city to run tournaments for Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, basically though, you can see like we're all interested in all this stuff. So even though like Valerie and I were so focused on video games and esports for the most part, like you know, you walk into our office and there's a box of Pokemon. Dan, our our uh, broadcast uh, manager, he's got a box of Pokemon cards he's left in the office for us to go through. You know, I think each of us at some point or another have had our binders sitting there. There we go. And Jeremy's got games in his, like right next to his desk. So, you know, it's kind of like really games. the crux of it. Like we realize there's like this overlap. Let's let's try to take advantage of this some way. Um, and we've wanted to do so much more at St. Clair with our facility. Like we've got... This big facility with the Nexus pretty much brand new, just over a year old, essentially, at this point, and tons of space at St. Clair. If you haven't been to St. Clair in a while, um, you know, it's going to look a lot different. Like, my, my dad graduated back in, like, the 70s or something, and he walked through last year, and he's like, what is this school? It's huge now. Uh, it's grown a lot. So we're going to take advantage of that. We've got the space, we've got the power, we've got the internet. Um, so we're going to build something cool and see how it goes. So um, with that in mind... Right. So let's let's start to introduce a little bit of what we're trying to do, what we're trying to accomplish, what we're trying to build. So I'll throw it over to Brent to just kind of give us a broad overview, sort of like maybe talk about the philosophy of, of what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah, for sure. So there, there is a lot of interesting stories as to how I think we came to the the conclusion of of even what the event was going to be. And and thus the philosophy was born after that, I think, coming into this. I mean, everybody here can agree. It was maybe a bit of a rocky start because we didn't even have, we didn't even know what it was. So how could we build a philosophy or any of the logistics of the event uh, to put in place because we didn't even know what it was. And I think pretty early on within, I'd, I'd say, I would say it took a couple of weeks and a couple of meetings to realize that, you know, we, we stirred with the idea of like, is this a collector's event or like, what is it exactly? And then we just landed on, well, it's it's for gaming. It's just for people to play different games and that doesn't necessarily mean it's just video games or just tcgs it's just gaming like people are coming to game and enjoy themselves and so i think the philosophy that was um you know naturally come to with all of us is number one just and this is going to sound very simple but number one is just make a good event i think like so many so many uh, different events that I've been to, they it's clear that the direction that they're trying to head is is you know make it make a bunch of profit or make uh, you know uh, this huge brand or whatever. Like we are just scrapping that, and we're just thinking from the perspective of the attendees and the vendors and the people that we that we we're caring about in all this, which is which is everybody involved. Just make a good event. And this, I'd say the second part of that philosophy, what that grows into is actually my own company's philosophy, which is just everyone has to enjoy themselves. We want to make sure that everything's there for everybody. The basics are met, the food, the washrooms, whatever. Uh, but then everything else is run very smoothly. I think at any point in time, Jeremy could have easily, just as an example, could have easily said, I'm going to run all the tournaments. I'm going to get all the glory. I'm going to, you know, whatever. But his philosophy is, you know, we we don't need to do that. Let's make sure that the people who do these things the best get in there and do them the best so that everybody can enjoy themselves as much as possible. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah, the last thing I would say that's that's 
our philosophy is is just you know it's it's grassroots like we're we're growing this thing from the ground up and and everybody's getting involved and it's it really is like the epitome of grassroots you know i used to be very involved in the smash brothers melee scene which the word grassroots is just it's everywhere in that scene but this is really like that to the extreme because without so many different individual events that are all grassroots even like we've got like cornhole going on um all those things are just these individual little grassroots thing that kind of creates this to carry that metaphor this like open field of grass you know where, where it kind of <laughs> m- amalgamates together to something just awesome so yeah just uh you know that was a bit of a long-winded way to say like we just wanted to make an awesome event where everybody has fun and <clears throat> You know, I think there's going to be a lot of uh, intermingling between the different little grassroots communities that we've got. So I think that's uh, certainly something I'm looking forward to. And I think after all of our weekly meetings that I think we can all agree that's what we're looking forward to. Yeah, I'd say like just to add on to that, too, like I've I've been working at St. Clair since about 2017. And, um, you know, I've, I've seen all of this space and it's always just looked like a blank canvas to me. And it's like, how do we? one day can we fill all this are we going to accomplish that this year i don't know we're going to fill as much of it as we can with things um but really i don't even think we will fill it all the way you know we will this is something where hopefully over the next few years we can grow add a few things you know I, i'm i'm anticipating some vendors or some you know maybe random people that have a certain thing they could show off or a certain tournament they like to run they're going to see what we do this year and then they're going to approach us next year and they'll say like i want to add on I've already been talking with a couple people um, that are that like unfortunately are busy this year. One one guy's got a wedding and and whatever else, and they're like, yeah, I'll be in there next year. Like I'll like one guy hopefully running some trivia stuff or whatever next year. We'll bring people in, and that's kind of the idea. Is like we'll just provide the blank canvas, bring individuals in that have some sort of cool thing they do or cool thing they sell or whatever, and have them each fill a spot. And if we have all of these cool things jammed into this venue at a low price you know hopefully it just the value is there for people that's kind of the idea right then in my mind i think you know individually if we just run you know just a smash tournament or just a magic the gathering tournament like those are great and those are cool and we do have those things happening in the city all the time now what if we take all of those things and have them all happen at one time so that you can walk over and play or watch some smash for a while then walk over and you know, watch some magic or go over and check out the vendors, maybe open some packs. You know, that's kind of the idea, the philosophy that I see. I'm envisioning myself walking through this event and you know, taking in all these different types of things. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see how that goes. And actually, I don't know what thing I just said. I said something, um, but I said, oh, I said value. OK, that's the that's the little meme in our in our discord, by the way, if you put value. If you put value app. in the in the, in our Discord, I don't know if we have it on Twitch, do we? We do, we do. Is it here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so here's there. value for anybody watching. Um, but yeah, <laughs> value is just my face. So anyway, um, that yeah, that's awesome. kind of the idea. At the end of the day, how much? How can we create as much value as possible for um, the people attending and participating, but also for all of the different vendors and people that are providing something to the event as well? That's kind of the the that's the the philosophy the way i see it um so anyway let's jump into the next part here first of all though i do want to um just give a quick shout out uh, amanda who was typing that value there amanda is the one behind the scenes today running the broadcast for us so just want to give a quick shout out to her for doing that on this uh what is it tuesday is it a tuesday or wednesday 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 evening i'm off by a day (laughs) um so just give a quick shout out to amanda for doing that uh, so next thing I'll do as well, I know Amanda's already got it up on the screen for all of you, so you can see, but we're running the event this year through start.gg. So if you're a Smash or fighting games uh, player, you've, you're probably really familiar. If not, though, it might be kind of a new platform to you, but start.gg, start.gg makes it like pretty easy to run events like this, which is why we're using it. So I dropped the link there in the chat. So anybody watching, if you want to navigate over there, and, and if you haven't seen this page yet, you can get an idea. Got like a lot of our vendors and stuff linked in there. Um, this will be kind of the central homepage for everything we're doing with the event. So rule sets will get posted here, pricing breakdowns. You know, this is how you register for things, how you, you know, just learn about the event in general. 
Um, but it, because the event is so extensive, it's going to be a lot to learn, right? And that's why we wanted to do this show. So um, let's start talking about what's going to be there, right? So I'll throw it over, first of all, to Valerie um, to talk about what we've got planned so far. And again, even though we're only 10 days away, we're adding more to this event as we go. So you'll, you'll see new stuff between now and next week that's added to the event. So you, you'll just have to come and check it out to, to see everything we end up doing. Um, but Valerie, maybe just introduce what we've got planned so far on the esports side of things. Yeah, of course. So on, on the esports side, well, like you mentioned Smash and FGC earlier, so we'll start with that. Um, we're actually putting in like a huge prize pot for Smash and FGC. Uh, so we'll actually be bringing Melee back. We'll be doing uh, Smash Bros. Melee and Ultimate, both with a 350 prize pot bonus. Um, and then for fighting games, we're doing Tekken 8 and Street Fighter 6, also both with a 350 pot bonus. So total, that's 1500 towards smash and fighting games just like that um which is pretty big that's pretty awesome for the fighting game community especially for uh you know a solo game we'll be able to do probably top eight payouts and and all that and uh yeah that's just that's just great especially for our smash class weeklies that, be, that have been ramping up the last few weeks with melee uh hopefully we'll be able to see a lot of the familiar faces out there it looks like we do have um Daniil or otherwise known as Betterson McGee in the chat as well. He'll be uh, kind of leading things off with um, with our Smash and FGC. So quick shout out to him. Um, and uh, we might, good thing you're here, because we might lean on you if we get any questions specifically geared for those games at any point here while we're, while we're streaming. I, I do know one of the main questions was about the prize pool split. Um, it was like this, about the 750 prize pool split. So it is going to be split between the two games each. Because I believe in our information, we just have 750 as a prize pool uh, listed. Like yeah, we can probably get a bit more granular with that. Maybe yeah, yeah, we'll we'll probably edit that. Um, but aside from Smash and fighting games, of course, in Saints gaming fashion, we're doing a FPS tournament. We're doing Valorant, um, and that's probably our title event. That's our biggest event. It's a two thousand dollar Valorant tournament. Um, registration is limited since it is a one day event. We want to minimize the amount of teams so we can actually finish the bracket in a day um but that's probably the most exciting esport title happening there is the valorant tournament because in the past in our previous events we've had teams travel out before already um travel over from michigan travel over from toronto so that one's gonna be really exciting and on top of that we actually do have hotel discounts this time around for uh the event so anybody who's actually traveling far for valorant can probably stay a night and not have to rush drive back in the you know right after the tournament but one thing to note too on uh yeah. i'm gonna jump in the valorant right we've got i'm just looking here just so that everybody watching is aware we've got four teams so far signed up for valorant which means we only have four slots left um so if you are one of those uh procrastinators looking to get a, a spot in the tournament um you better kind of figure that out quickly at least get one person in there to reserve the spot because um i don't think we're going to go beyond eight at all like i don't i i, I know sometimes we we might say we're going to eight and then expand it last minute i truly don't think we're going to go beyond eight because this is a one day event on. and there's so much going on so we are like capping this at eight there's no no room so if you don't get in tough luck come back next year yeah well, the Valorant tournament is kind of the main esports event there. Uh, but aside from that one, we do have 1,500 still allocated aside for side events. Um, and I believe we are locking in, correct me if I'm wrong, Sean, we're locking in the Mario Kart time trials. Um, yeah, I, I reached out to, to, so we have Nicholas Siri, who's going to be um, leading things off for us when it comes to these like side events, smaller tournaments. There's two that he is he was ready to like a hundred percent confirm, which was uh, Mario Kart time trials we're going to be doing throughout the day. So anybody will be able to just drop in, set a record time, and then come back later see if anybody's beat it, and there'll be prizing allocated to that. Um, and there's going to be a very similar thing going on with with Beat Saber as well. So we've got some VR setups with Beat Saber. So you can come on in, you can set a time. Like I, I don't know what song it'll be or anything like that at this point, but. Um, I'm assuming there'll be a song selected and you'll have to set a record on it. And at the end of the day, whoever kind of maintains that high spot 
is uh, is going to take home the prize. So those are two that he was ready to confirm. But I know he's been talking about a bunch of different other games um, that he plans to do. We also might even allocate some. We've got a partner coming from London, um, Game On Entertainment Service. They're going to bring a bunch of games down and stuff. And I know they've got like a Duck Hunt station, for example. So maybe we'll we'll allocate some some prize money to a Duck Hunt tournament or something like that as well. So um, yeah, the side events, kind of the plan with those is just to have something easy that you can walk over to that area, you know, jump into quickly, do something, have some fun, and then check out the rest of the convention. You know, if you're, if you're coming for Valorant, you're pretty much going to be stuck playing Valorant all day. Let's be honest. You might get a few minutes here and there to jump out and check other stuff out. But if you're looking for more of a casual experience, we'll have like a, a variety of different side events you can dip into here and there and, and yeah. uh, check out there's the rest. Definitely, there's definitely something for everyone. Uh, something I also forgot to mention, too, other than Valorant, is actually the Rocket League tournament that we have Lotus 8 Esports coming in to host. Um so how many how many setups are we setting up for that? I don't quite remember now. I believe we have twelve, 12. setups for that. But they they are coming in to host a Rocket League tournament as well. So, wow, we actually have a lot going on. We have Valorant, Rocket League, um, Tekken, Street Fighter, Smash Ultimate, and Melee, and then the handful of side events. And that's only just the esports and gaming stuff. Awesome. Okay. Um... We'll come back. I see a few questions in the chat already, but we'll come back to those like later on. We'll go through kind of this brief overview first. So next off, uh, I'm going to throw it over to Jeremy, just kind of introduce what we have so far kind of uh, locked in for TCG events. Yeah, so TCG events, oh man, there's so much TCG <laughs> events. <laughs> um, so I'll go through the vendors that have kind of helped out. So what we did kind of, we talked and I was like, let's reach out the Olive Branch to everybody in our local community and to some of the other guys that I know in other communities that are really, really cool to work with. So we went through everything. We went to, you know, Tabletop Renaissance, FNC House of Cards, uh, Brimstone, myself. Like those are some of the major ones in the city that we got partnerships with that are making this happen. Um, so unfortunately, Brimstone couldn't uh do the event but they did give us a basket for part of the sponsorship uh so they made a donation um so that leave left kind of a, a void because we were hoping that they would take the Yu-Gi-Oh! so cg realm instead took the Yu-Gi-Oh! uh so we have the advanced tournament which we're giving out roughly four to five hundred dollars in prize for and then we have an edison tournament where we're giving about four to five hundred dollars in prize also so that left a hole for MTG. So we brought on two vendors for MTG. Uh, we brought in All Tapped Out Gaming from Leamington, and we brought out Total Play from Sarnia. So both these stores are really, really cool stores and really, really cool guys that run these stores. So Steve from Total Play said, yeah, let's do this. Let's you know bite off this massive thing. Let's do a CEDH tournament where we're basically giving out $2,500 plus in prizes. So first through four, fourth prize is a dual land, which if you're an MTG guy, you'll understand what that is. And then from fifth through eighth is going to be a shock land and a fetch land that match together uh, all the way down. Then we're going to add extra prizes to that, they said. Also on the MTG side, we have a $400 Pioneer tournament. We have sit and go, uh, just regular EDH events. So we're doing, I think, a Toonie event where it's $2 to enter. For uh, Whoever wins the pod gets a pack. And then we're doing a $10 uh, star credit event where everybody puts in $10 for players. Uh, whoever wins gets $25. Each other player gets $5 that they can use to re-enter the event again to continuously do these throughout the day. Plus, of course, we'll have our regular booster drafts like we always do, and that's an eight-man pod, sit and go. These guys are also ready to do win -a boxes The MTG is just nuts. Like They're just throwing so much at it. I'm sure for the Yu-Gi-Oh! 2, I forgot, we'll probably end up doing side events, but we have two major events that go back-to-back -back also. Then we have Pokemon. <laughs> These events are nuts. So Frank has thrown everything at it from House of Cards. 
a I believe the prize is over two thousand dollars in the Pokemon event, and it's twenty dollar entry. Um, he also is doing Pokemon Go, and I think he threw a three hundred dollar prize at that, and I think it's a ten dollar entry. Uh, he also has a group coming in that are going to be running One Piece, and I think he threw. Don't quote me on this. <laughs> I think he threw like. Man, I wish I knew the prize payout on this. I think it's $2,000 at one piece also, and it's $25 entry. Uh, Frank has been a big contributor. That's uh, F&C House of Cards. A huge contributor to this. Um, Sorry, how much and then we have one piece? I, I think it's two grand, man. Oof. I'm pretty sure it's $2,000 that they threw at this. So I just I had um, to make sure you repeated that, because that is crazy. Frank is so committed to... Uh, making the community go. Actually, we all are. Like, I can't say that there's any of us that are less. Like, even Brimstone donating, they didn't have to. They chose to. Uh, when I get to House of Car or um, Tabletop Renaissance, actually, I'll move to that right now. Tabletop Renaissance, um, Solon at Tabletop is doing Flesh and Blood, and he felt like, to me, it felt like he obviously felt like he wasn't doing enough um, for the Flesh and Blood tournament. So he's decided to do Warhammer and a double paint event also. Uh, the prize payouts, I'm not too sure on. He wasn't too sure on how he was going to finalize that. But that's definitely going on. And then we have uh, Christian from Toronto. He's coming all the way down to run our Lorcana. Uh, that's a very cool event because it's a constructed event. First prize is a box of first chapter, which is the very first set that has come out for Lorcana and then second through eighth will be prizes uh pack prizes of uh Ursula's return also Solon's flesh and blood event everybody that signs up I believe gets four packs of one of the sets automatically just for the sign up I might just sign up yeah <laughs> Brent's a big aren't you have a didn't you, you were collecting that for a while right you uh I've got a box right here it's a two row box dedicated to all my cold foils for flesh and blood so yeah I'm, I'm in it yeah so these guys like this event is jam-packed with people that have given back to the community that are growing this grassroots and my big thing when i would go to these sponsors i would say to them every time you know this is our first one we're growing it from the ground up this will not be our last one and a spoiler alert, what we're trying to do for next year, in my eyes, is it's 2025. So we should probably give around $25,000 away in prizes. So that's what we're going to aim for. Hey, Jeremy, oh, slow yeah. down a little bit here. <laughs> Sean, we're already, I think we're close to six. I think we're close to $16,000 in prizes right now for everybody for all the events. I think yeah, that's the we, gotta, we should right we now. should add that all together. Honestly, we should we gotta we gotta it, do that. It's very close, but like I said, I picked up a new vendor today that is three vendors in one, and I got to see how much they're putting in, and then I can get you the number for that. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, anything else for TCG before we throw it over to Brent? Listen, if you're into TCGs, just come bring your friends. There will be something for you. And if they're not, we'll find you something else to do. <laughs> There's definitely something for everyone. Yeah. Okay, this is the one. Okay, so we're going to throw it over to Brent next. And Brent's probably got the most chaotic topic to talk about. <laughs> so, Brent, if you're not into esports or TCG, what else can you do at the event? <laughs> you know what? I, I, it's funny. Uh, I'm going to go through that list, but I just wanted to say something really funny. I've got a friend <clears throat> who's uh, watching right now. So, you know, Jared just said he added uh, like three, three vendors today, which, which is great for, uh, even if you're not going there to shop, it's great for everybody because when a vendor comes in, every single dollar they put in goes towards a prize pool. So if you're there for smash that, you know, it could change things for you. It could change things, or however we're structuring. It could be some side event that you play. It could be the Beat Saber thing. It could be whatever. So, um, anyways, I've I've just got a buddy who's watching the stream here. He said he's actually going to donate ten wooden dice trays as well. So if you're into uh, 
Um, and that's just now, just because of the stream. So if you're into like uh, TTRPGs or anything like that, uh, there's apparently going to be 10 dice trays uh, coming in. So uh, anyways, stuff being added all the time. And let's talk about some of the stuff that's going to be going on at this event. So this, bear in mind, this list is not going to be totally comprehensive uh, because things are like being added usually nothing's being taken away but there's constantly stuff that we're cooking up that's being added um and uh let's let's just go through the list so my company does escape rooms and so there's obviously going to be escape rooms there we've got a disarm the bomb themed escape room that's very high tech it was actually built in poland and it is awesome uh so we're actually going to be bringing that you just play that for free we're going to be setting up a, a cool scavenger hunt that'll lead you around the building go to different places you know if you've got downtime you can kind of read clues go to different areas discover some of the other things that are happening and, and kind of seek out and try to solve the riddles as you go uh, we also have a separate thing through my company called jelly ball which is essentially paintball but there's no mess and it, there's no uh, real pain from it so I was thinking you know for all the Valorant or shooter game players that are out there you can take your skills on the actual field and we've got a setup that we're bringing uh, that is uh, pretty large and uh, pretty freaking awesome I've been playing that thing for the last two summers with people and it is awesome um other things should, going on get a, we got i think valerie you got to get a marketing like video made during that time we got to take advantage of having that on campus we, we <laughs> gotta get you in the video content piece yeah yep. <laughs> actually you know what then we'll uh after this uh, in our next meeting we're going to discuss the foam cannon if i can bring the foam cannon i think people would have a riot with that oh my God. <laughs> yeah, that one sounds like a mess it well you know what it is a mess but it all goes away it just soaks into the ground listen i'm going to convince you guys <laughs> uh so there's that then there's all kinds of other things happening so there's like uh you can call it a tournament, you can call it a challenge. So there's like a rock, paper, scissors challenge and tournament with prizing, of course. We're probably gonna have prizing for the fastest escape room and fastest scavenger hunt and all these different things. Um, there's a concert that also recently got added. Um, where is are you gonna take- It's confirmed actually, Jeremy. It's pseudo confirmed. 100% confirmed. It's 100%, 100%, 100 okay. Yeah, right, Taya. That's, that's great. Taya. Panara and her band are going to come down and play for two hours at our night market. Um, so, you, oh, sorry. <laughs> at the, at the what? At the what? Like, oh, that's coming no, at the end. That's no, at the that's end. not mine. Spoiler alert. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so there's going to be live music, okay? There's also going to uh, there's also going to be uh, open play board games run by, uh, I don't even know what to call him. He's like the... I'm going to call him like the ultimate champion of board games for our board city, uh, Mo, <laughs> who's got a YouTube channel. And uh, if you need to know anything about any board game, just pay the 10 bucks and go talk to Mo for a little bit, okay? That alone is worth the 10 bucks, just sitting down with Mo and learning about board games and playing with him. He's um, probably like, how many, Jeremy, you know him the best, I think, right? Like, how many board games do you think he's going to probably bring to this thing? Uh, if I was to guess, Mo's probably going to slim it down to about 40 to 50. I know that I gave him, I donated to him six or seven games to that are play to win games. So you sit down and play and then who's ever played, he's putting all into a raffle and then pulling at the end of the night uh, a name. And then we're going to send out that game to whoever it is. So I imagine that there'll probably be 40 to 50 different games there to play. Uh, most collections probably over 300 if I'm taking a guess at this but who knows who he, what he's going to pull out and how he's going to do this but I know he's he's uber excited it's awesome yeah like I've got five board games and you know like I would love to try out a few more than that because I'm, I'm always looking at lists like what games can I pick up but I don't want to go just make some giant investment some of these games can be pretty expensive so I've I've got a whole closet full that I keep looking at, and I'm like, you know what? I could I could bring a couple, but Mo's already got it. So what's the point? You know, <laughs> it's, true. it's true. Okay, so let's. I'm gonna keep going here. So there's uh, so there's open play board games. If I'm not mistaken, there's also gonna be like a kind of competitive board game uh, event that they're hosting. Um, there's no additional fee. You just if you're there and you can play in it, go play in it. We've got a card throwing uh, tournament or challenge. 
also prizes associated with that. There's something called a poker run, which I've never done, but Jer explained it to me. He said it's something from like the 1920s when he was a young kid uh, that was really awesome. And he would go to events and play that stuff all the time. It, it sounds great. It'll be a good nostalgic trip for anyone that's around Jer's age. Um, but no, it actually does sound awesome. There's also trivia. We've got uh, and when we say trivia, it's not just like we put together some trivia. We got the trivia guy from Windsor, and he's going to come to our event to host trivia all throughout the event. There's going to be gaming trivia, um, just tons of stuff happening. I can't, I, I don't believe I've covered everything. That is the end of my list. I don't think I've covered anything, everything, but I just want you to consider that list alone. If you paid 10 bucks to go somewhere where you could do, where you get a concert, you can play Jelly Ball, which by the way, Jelly Ball alone, you know, is a couple hundred bucks every time we come to your house to set this thing up. Escape rooms, typically, you know, we got a, there's a, a charge associated with that. 10 bucks and you can do all that stuff and go to vendors and see all the other things. I mean, I'm personally going to spectate. I put down spectating other events too. Spectating Rocket League is one of my favorite pastimes, and I suck at that game. I'm going to be watching that. I'm going to be watching the uh, the cornhole players. Like, you will not run out of things to do, and I hope that you're sad when it's all over because there's so much going on. So that that is my list. Uh, so luckily, the- while you were doing that, I I kept track and I could so I go through this list and see and mention a few <laughs> other things that you forgot. So yeah. you forgot one which is cornhole. We're going to have a cornhole tournament at this, which is kind of out of left field, but I'm excited to watch it. I think it's going to be pretty cool. Um, And what else do we have here? There's going to be, I think Jeremy technically mentioned it, even though it wasn't TCGs, but there's going to be tutorials if you want to learn how to paint minis. Right, Jeremy? I think. Um, It's actually not a a tutorial. It's actually two two different contests. It's a speed painting contest. Okay. Yeah, so he's doing two speed painting contests, but obviously it's going to be good guys painting miniatures, most likely. So come out and see it, because it should be an experience. Yeah, regardless, I'm sure you could like learn from them, that kind of stuff too, if you look and understand that. I've got Gundam written down here. Jeremy, you can probably talk about that as well, because I think it's also somebody from one of the card shops, correct? Or is so, it just going to be people selling Gundam? So it's going to be people selling Gundams. The Gundam gentleman, I haven't been able to get a hold of him. I haven't seen him. Um, we ha- You had him at uh, Sakura Fest. Um, okay. But I haven't been able to get a hold of him, see if he would come out and bring out his Gundams. Okay. Uh, what else did I have written down here? Um, Brent, maybe you can give us an update on, on cosplay. I think we've got at least a handful of cosplayers coming to hang out at the event, right? Yeah, so it's a little bit wishy-washy just because, uh, if I'm being honest, I've been uh, totally focused on some other portions of this event. But yes, we are expecting to have some cosplayers come out. If you guys have cosplay, please come out, do your cosplay. The whole event is like gaming, but bring anything. If you came dressed as like reboot characters it would be awesome so cosplayers i always find add to the event um so yeah we're gonna have some cosplayers there oh yeah sorry i forgot too i'm gonna uh, uh, this week actually i'm building a mario themed uh kind of photo booth area where you guys can take pictures i didn't tell you guys this but uh, i talked to the cosplayers about it they thought it would be a good idea so that's what i'm doing so if you've got a mario cosplay it will fit right into that little booth so awesome love it Okay, I think, I mean, there's probably more stuff that we've missed, to be honest with you, just because that's kind of what this event is. And there's there's more stuff. Like I mentioned previously, we're still talking with other vendors and different people as well um, that I'm sure, and even maybe from watching this video, like, okay, I want to go and set up. Especially now, because I will say it again and reiterate, like, we aren't charging vendor fees. So if you want to come here and show off a product or sell a product or whatever, just come and do it. Let us know. If you can chip in and provide some sort of you know, uh, donation to the event, like a prize or something like that's awesome. Um, and, and, and we'll put it to use and, but there's no like traditional vendor fees to come and set up and we've got tons of space. We will find room for people. Yeah, Sean. So that we didn't really touch on. So not only do we have our vendors mark or our vendors area, 
but we also have what's called creative lane. So that's our other vendors that create things. So whether it be uh, 3D printing, knitting stuff, uh, books, potentially they wrote a book or they created a game, things like that. They go into creative lane. So we have two different vendor spots for that. Cool. Yeah. And, and generally from, even from smaller events we've done, we've gotten some pretty cool stuff coming out. Like people doing like, I've seen like animate art before. I've seen some people doing like, um, like custom plushies and different stuff like that. So I'm hoping we see some of those types of people that come on out as well. Uh, again to this. Um, okay. So I think the next thing we've got here, um, Jeremy, if you can introduce us to so far, I mean, you've kind of done it already a little bit with um, talking about the TCGs, but maybe talking about uh, the different vendors you've got locked in and maybe like a brief overview of like the types of product you think they might bring with them and, and, and uh, set up at the event. Yeah, sure. So, uh, I mean, we have uh, ourselves, the CG realm. So we'll have our regular wheelhouse stuff. So we'll have Magic, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, Gundams, maybe some vintage video games, because I have a bunch. <laughs> and then we have Solon at Tabletop Renaissance. So he he does really well with Flesh and Blood, Lorcana, uh, Warhammer, uh, Gundams also. But he also does magic, like the traditional stuff that we normally do. Um, we have FNC House of Cards. So Frank is coming out. He's bringing out, obviously, a ton of Pokemon, ton of One Piece. Um, that he, yeah, if you want Pokemon, you're going to see a lot there. You have Christian coming out from the upper hand in Toronto. And I believe it's Toronto or just outside of Toronto. Uh, he specializes in Pokemon, Magic, Lorcana, One Piece, you name it. TCG wise, he specializes in it. Then we have All Tapped Out Gaming from Leamington. His specialty is Magic the Gathering. He does have some other stuff, but I guarantee Chris is definitely going to bring his A game when he brings out his Magic. Then we have um, Total Play from Sarnia. I'm blanking on this. Total Play from Sarnia. Uh, this guy, Steve, is so unique and so cool. And he has really, really cool stuff. So he has a ton of graded stuff. Magic, One Piece, Pokemon. He has tons of vintage video games that you guys haven't seen in a long, long time. Uh, when he, when Steve calls me and says, hey, I'm bringing my A game, you never know what that guy's going to bring. <laughs> he could have a Charizard, PSA 8, PSA 9, uh, you know, first ed. Like, I never know with Steve. It just, it's crazy. And then we have, um, uh, what's the gentleman, his place, uh, Tim Shaw, right? Uh, oh, yeah, it's uh, One Card Short. That's right. One Card Short. Sorry, Tim, if you're watching this. Uh, <laughs> one Card Short's coming out. Um, he specializes in Pokemon. He is, I believe, Yu-Gi-Oh! also. Uh, he doesn't have necessarily a storefront, but he does a lot online. And this guy, same thing. He brings his A game. Like I've seen him at a couple of the smaller events, things like that. And uh, Tim's always there, and he always has the top-notch product. So, Pokemon-wise, for you guys, it's going to be insane. That scene, uh, Magic-wise, it's going to be insane. Also, Lorcana, we never know. Like I still have a lot of stuff coming out for Lorcana, and I imagine that Christian's going to bring the A game for Lorcana. And then Yu-Gi-Oh, we have. A ton of Yu-Gi-Oh coming out with us, so there'll be plenty of TCG product for everybody. Uh, did I miss anybody, guys, on the big vendor side, other than the three you know, new guys I, that we just got? Yeah. I don't what know I, what they're I, bringing I, uh, yet. I, I I'll be like, honest; I, I trusted uh -huh. you more than Brent, so I wasn't I wasn't <laughs> looking at the list. I, I think I think we forgot to mention tabletop bellhop there. Um, table, tabletop they're, bellhop. They're in the chat right now too. So yes. Yeah, so, so well, we talked about Mo and and his extreme knowledge of of games yeah and like i don't Brent think we said, actually it's mentioned worth... the name of the store we just said mo <laughs> so it's only I mean, it's right. actually just a uh he has a podcast and things but you can also get discount codes from mo when you're purchasing games at at different spots um 
but come buy them from me first, obviously. Sorry, Mo. Um, <laughs> but no, Mo is Windsor slash from here to. I'll say the same thing that I say about Mo about my collection for Magic cards. You know, we have the biggest Magic card collection from here to Toronto. I don't know what Toronto has, but I know from here to Toronto we have the most. And for board games, Mo's knowledge is better than anybody's from here to Toronto. I guarantee, if not more. Uh, Mo was just nominated for an award at Origins, uh, so he's his podcast is is growing very very rapidly. His name is very 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 well known in the community. And the support that that guy has given and the time that he's given for very little is absolutely the epitome of this event because we've all done the exact same thing, growing this from the ground up. And to have Mo there means everything to me. Yeah, Mo's been, Mo's been, uh, we're just shouting out Mo. I know he's in the chat. He's been supporting the, even the esports side since like way back. Brent, you probably remember back in, um, like the land of the dead days, I believe like Mo came out to a couple, a couple of those back then yeah. and supported the event. Uh, maybe even donated some stuff too. I can't remember off the top of my head, but a uh, big supporter of the grassroots stuff. And I'm really, yeah, kind of really um, epitomizes the philosophy of bringing all these different grassroots communities together. Yeah. Um. Cool. So is that, do you have anybody else that you're remembering now or does that kind of cover it? Other than the creative, other than the creative lane, uh, 3D print guys, the knit, the knitting uh, uh, girl from that's coming out. Uh, there's a gentleman, Brett. Do you remember that gentleman that uh, we have coming out for the board games that created his custom board game and his oh, Kickstarter yes. just went live? Oh man, I've forgotten his name. But the, I'm gonna find the name of at the very least. I'm gonna find the name of the board game and the company uh, because it, it is really cool. Like, there's a guy who created a board game and he's got the Kickstarter going live and he's local, so he's setting up a booth to kind of showcase his game and he put up a donation for the um, for the event as well. So he's gonna be. Uh, I think he's just gonna be cool to kind of hang out and talk with as well. So yeah, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get the name. Just give me like keep going. I'll I'll, I'll get it in the background here. Yeah, we got Mo confirming in the chat. He's got a menu of about I like that that word choice, a menu of about 40 games. Nice. Yeah, he'd, he's like the he's like I, I imagine him as like a like a wine, what do you call that? Like a wine expert. You ask him like, you know what, I kinda like kinda like semi sweet, you know, something from France. He's like, I've got the perfect board game for you. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I need an RPG, good for three people, worker placement. <laughs> No <laughs> dice rolling. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Um, I think before we jump into some questions, I think the last thing, and this is one that we're excited about. We definitely like we've we've admittedly haven't pushed this hard enough yet, but we we need to a little bit. But I think this is one that we're all excited about because we want to take advantage of it ourselves. I think a little bit is um, and and I think I'm gonna I think. I think uh, I'm going to throw it to Jeremy to introduce the idea because I think it was his idea in the first place. So let's let Jeremy take it over and, and give us an introduction to what we're planning with, with the night market. Sorry, Val. I thought you were going to take this one, but uh, <laughs> you, you are correct. This I'm is stealing um, away from her. <laughs> this is my baby. So I thought what would be a really, really cool concept is and i think brent you actually helped out because you brought up the idea and then we kind of expand on or extrapolated on this to make this happen uh a night market so we have an area that we're going to open up at 6 p.m so all of our vendors are going to shut down at 6 p.m the tournaments will still be in process and things like that but all the vendors will shut down and then we open up this separate area called the night market um we'll have people line up with their wares Anybody that has a pass that is in the event can go to their car, go wherever they want, come in with their wares and set up at this night market. Sort of like, I'm going to dub it a flea market, but we wanted to call it a night market because hence it's at night and hence it's a market. <laughs> so um, we're setting it that plays up. into the Valorant it. theme too, a little bit. You know yeah. what I mean? Then Valorant, Valorant's got a night market in there. Kind of plays into that a little bit. Anyway. Back to yeah. introduction. So we have this area that's absolutely free for everybody. It, no cost. So you can come to our event, pay $10, 
come to our event and make money. So you set up at the night market, whatever you want to charge on your wares. And we're basically just, just going to open it up like it's giant flea market. And again, we'll have entertainment going in the background to kind of keep it live and loose. So yeah, that's, uh, it's pretty crazy. I don't know. <laughs> there's a, ah, we're asking it. There's a, so I'm already jumping ahead to some of the questions. There is a question in the chat. Will there be beers at the night market? Now, I will say we have talked, we have discussed alcohol at this event. We haven't committed to doing it. There's a chance. Now, if we don't do it this year, if it seems to be something people might be interested in for next year, maybe maybe it's something that we we add in. Um, there, there, there is the ability. There technically is the ability. So we'll have to so, think about that. So, Sean, we really need to think about that because A... The auditorium is being used. I'm giving you guys a, a spoiler of kind of how the setup is. The auditorium is being used for cornhole, which also has requested alcohol. <laughs> it's also being used for the concert, which also requested alcohol. And now it's being used for the night market when it gets the changeover, which also has been requested for alcohol. So end of the day, everything in that room has requested for alcohol. So if we could get alcohol, very cool. <laughs> We'll have, to, we'll have to have some more discussions on it. If not this year, you know, we'll uh, we'll definitely put it on the to-do list for next year for sure. Um, cool. Talk. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, so that's the night market idea. So really, it's like you know, the vendors all shut down. Everybody can just jump in. I'm definitely planning on bringing my binder of like four trade Pokemon cards. I'll be walking around like it's lunchtime back in grade three, grade <laughs> four. Whatever it was when Pokemon was huge, I can't remember exactly how old I was. Um, I'll be walking around like it's recess, trying to trying to make wheel and deal. And I'm thinking we'll see a very similar thing from a lot of different people, just walking around, setting up, trying to sell stuff. It probably won't even just be cards either. Like I imagine there'll be some other people with like maybe you know vintage games or um, you know different stuff. I know wasn't there somebody? Was that you, Jeremy, talking about somebody who had a bunch of? uh dungeons and dragons books or something they wanted to sell or, or like yes actually that's that is me we have we took on a massive collection of uh old tsr books and and things like that like paperback novels so we're going to be bringing those out um yeah we're going to set those up on the table and then i think somebody mentioned that they had old D D um first ed and second ed books and they are planning on coming out too to put them out on the table easy brent calm down but i mean let's go back to the night market one more second so you got to understand like from a vendor's point of view we are so excited about it because normally we're not going to have time in the day to kind of go through and see everybody's stuff as as the day goes on and that night market opens up, all the vendors shut down, so we can leave a couple employees at our booths to clean up, and we get to walk through the night market and uh, pick and choose, talk to everybody, and see what we can purchase for our stores and for whatever ourselves, <laughs> and go from there, right? It's awesome. Yeah, I think it's going to be pretty cool. I think, uh, you know, even if people don't quite understand it this year, I think people are going to experience it and see people buying, trading, selling, showing stuff off, and they're gonna, you know, start planning. What are they? What are they gonna bring next year? Like, I really do anticipate that happening for a lot of people. Um, okay, I think that goes to the bulk of the stuff we wanted to introduce. So we'll jump over into questions. So if you've got questions, if you're in the chat, I've already got a bunch of questions that we gathered ahead of time. Um, so we'll start going through those, and I'm gonna go back through this chat as well after I ask the first question, um, just so I can double check if anybody if we missed some. But the first one that I had received was. Um, from somebody asking if it's still possible to apply to be a vendor or to have a booth. And I'll let Jeremy kind of take that one over just because he's been working with most of the vendors, um, just kind of explaining what the process is and you know what it will mean to be a vendor essentially at the event. Jeremy, still there? <laughs> no, do you, oh. Uh-oh. Did he Uh-oh. disconnect? No, he's, I think he's muted. Am I muted? There we go. Oh, you're, you're back. Muted. Okay, Jeremy's yeah. back. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so as a vendor, um, we don't have a lot of space left over. I am I can always make space. Uh, we will find but, room. There's lots of space yeah, yeah. in the college. We will find room. 
Yeah, the, like I will always find room. So if you're a creative person and you're bringing something that should go in our creative lane, no problem. We're looking for a small donation. Um, the unfortunate part ab about the creative lane is you still have to buy a pass to the event. Um, the reason why I require that is because what you're donating is very small and the amount of advertising and stuff that we're going to do for you is very large. Now, our bigger vendors that are giving, you know, like I said earlier, the smallest was $300. The biggest was $3,500. Um, those guys obviously have staff, things like that, that we accommodate. And with the amount that they're putting um, towards the community, and you guys have to remember this, this whole thing is community driven. Like we're not keeping a single penny of this. We're not putting a penny of it in our pockets. Actually, I believe that in the end, the college potentially is going to lose money. And I know that, I'm the amount that I'm going to put forward or that I have put forward and some of the other vendors I put forward, they all know that it's a lost leader for them, but it is all community driven. We are pushing this for you guys. It's not for us. Trust me. It is not for us. If it was for us, Brent said it right. I would run all the events myself, but it's not for us. It's about the community. It's how do we grow this from ground up and how do we make something really, really successful and really, really fun for Windsor. Mm -hmm. So uh, getting back to the vendors, if it's if it's something small, no problem. If it's something large, we can fire you in the other hall or in the other area. Um, I do have room, but very little. <laughs> yeah, and and I'll say like, you know, at the end of the day, because people might be asking like, why are you really, you know, if if you're not making money, like, what's the point? Like, why are you doing it or whatever? But at the end of the day, for us, and I mean, each of us here, we have different motivations or whatever, but. I can at least speak from the St. Clair perspective, from like our varsity esports program and that kind of thing. We just want people walking through the event, like walking through the venue, seeing what we've got at the school. That's number one. Um, number two is we're we're planning like Valerie's going to have her marketing team there. Um, we've got Dan and, and Amanda who's working. We're going to be doing some broadcasting. Um, so you know, from that perspective, we're gonna we get our value in some other ways, creating cool content on campus. Um, that brings some eyeballs to the school. And, you know, that's really what we're getting out of it. And on top of that, we're going to have a, like a pretty large number of students involved running the event that are getting experience doing this. So um, all of the esports tournament organizers are either students or recent graduates. The broadcasting staff are all students. Um, you know, we'll have students spread throughout the event as volunteers as well. So, you know, that's kind of what we're getting out of it like financially as jeremy mentioned like to be completely transparent like we're, we're if we can we're aiming to break even sure but at the end of the day if we end up quote unquote like losing a little bit of money it, we just consider it like a little bit of a marketing expense essentially on our budget um at the end of the day so yeah we're we're trying to keep things as as cheap and affordable as possible for the vendors and for any of the people in attendance coming to check the event out that kind of thing um, and speaking of that, uh, because I was just scrolling through the chat and I realized we may maybe never even gave the extremely basic details of the event. Um, so, I mean, you all have the link to the page, but we probably should have mentioned this is July 20th happening at St. Clair College and cost is currently if you buy it pre-registration online is $10. Um, or if you decide to wait till you buy at the door, it's $15 and that gets you in. And we didn't mention this as well. I'm going to jump ahead to another question I had because there was one question because it ties into this. There was one other question about um, asking, like, basically, is this event family friendly? Like, can kids come? Yes, absolutely. And not only that, but we did decide today um, and we've got to post it and advertise it, but we're not going to charge anything to kids under 10. So kids under 10 get into the event free, um, you know, come along and check things out and the way that we think about that is you get a kid involved in these communities early on, like it's going to help all of us out in the long run. If those kids, you know, become interested in, in these different hobbies that we're all supporting and growing. So, um, so bring your kids along, they'll find something to do. We've got lots of casual games for them to play. There'll be some board games to check out. There'll be, you know, video games to check out card games to check out things to watch, things to see, go throw a couple of cornhole bean bags, uh, pelt each other with paintballs. <laughs> Uh, you know, it, it'll it'll be a ball. good time. Yes, yeah, I, know, sorry. I don't jelly mean belt. I mean right. softly land jelly balls on <laughs> it each feel, other. It feels it feels like an elastic, <laughs> uh, the snap of an elastic. That's what it feels. So, 
I got I got a correction here. I'm sorry. I missed a zero on Mo's collection. It's three thousand board games that he has. Oh my God. And then <laughs> and then another thing I want to make sure that everybody knows because we talk about all these tournaments, tournament, 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 tournament. This is not just about tournaments. Like bring out your family, have a good time. You know, go do the escape room, go do the jelly ball, go do the foam cannon. It's coming. Um, <laughs> uh, go, go try out the rock, paper, scissor challenge. You know, just go and have a good time at this event. That's all that matters. Um, when we created this event, the biggest thing to me that I preached to these guys at a constant was how do we keep somebody there four to six hours? Because I'll, I'll be honest with you. There's a lot of events that I go to where people you walk through the event and an hour, hour and a half later, you're walking out of the event and that's it. So our goal was to create an event that was just like a big fun fest that I don't know if that name is copyrighted or anything, but it is a big fun <laughs> fest from four to six hours uh, where you stay. If, if you stay longer, you stay longer. You're welcome to stay and sit and chat with me or Brent or anybody else. But um four to six hours just come out have fun bring your family tell everybody have a great time i mean that's what it means to me man yeah just to add an extra couple details right so so doors are going to open at 9 a.m on saturday the 20th and vendors and everything are going to be in place until 6 p.m after that point is going to be the night market from 6 p.m for i believe we have it scheduled for two hours um, and we anticipate some of the tournaments to go on into the night a little bit, but everything should be wrapped up by about 11 or 12. Um, and I don't want to stay any later than that personally. So, but it'll be a full day. So like nine, you can, if you want to really maximize the time there and just hang out 9am till about, you know, 11pm at night generally is, is what we're aiming for. Um, so what are the questions that I receive here? Just before um, you, just before you dive into that. Yeah, go ahead. I, I just, I have to, I apologize. I've got a bunch of little kids that I need to put to sleep upstairs. I can hear them freaking out. So I'm <laughs> going to, over. I'm going to step up, but <clears throat> I did make sure that there was a layout ready for you guys for when I, when I had to go. So I am going to drop out, but I will leave with this. You have to come to this event. <laughs> you will not get a better give me the values in chat <laughs> yeah, value months. face you will not get a better sean sean's face in chat than <laughs> than this event 10 bucks is ridiculous even if there weren't tournaments so uh and i will tell you too i want to leave on this note too I've been getting amped up through the chat. I'm, I was like typing to some of the people, like trying to, you know, getting them in the stream or whatever. And there were some moments where you guys were saying things like the, you know, 2K for this event, 1500 for that event. I was like, whoa, <laughs> there's certain things that I learned that kind of got me hyped up. So anyways, it's, it's going to be so sick. 10 more days, bring your friends, bring as many people as you can. The more, the merrier. Uh, and the event will be much, much better if you personally come out because uh you know nobody likes an empty event it's not gonna be but the more full the better so just just come okay anyways i gotta drop out but you guys should come out <laughs> well, thanks for joining us thanks Brian. Yeah. Have a good night, <laughs> so continuing on i mean i'm we'll we'll try to get through some of these questions pretty quickly so we're not here all night um but let me see. Did you guys see any other questions that you wanted to jump on while I just go through this list a little bit here? Um, I did hear about vendor questions asking about setup um, and whether or not they come in to set up the day before or morning of, like what the vendor plan is with that. So, yeah, I mean, if you want to go through this, um, I believe the college said that we can start moving stuff around at 4 p.m. Yeah, so on the 4 Friday. PM Friday. Yeah, so 4 p.m. Friday, I will be there. I will be setting up my booth, obviously, because I can't set it up Saturday morning or else you guys won't have me. Uh, so we'll set up the bone, the bone structure of our vending area at uh, after 4 p.m. Um, so anybody else is welcome to come out. I don't suggest that you bring out the items that you're selling and leave there because we don't necessarily have the necessary security in place to deal with that. But if you have structures or anything like I have shelving, so 
um, you're more than welcome to bring that out. And then for regular setup, 7 a.m. the next morning, Saturday morning, is when we can get in there, start doing our setup. So you have two hours to kind of get your products in line, things like that. Okay, and, yeah, that's exactly ex- what I was just going to say on our end, we're, we have the student uh, staff as well to help set up on the day before to start preparing like the floor plan and, like you said, the skeleton layout of, of everything. Yeah, Jeremy kind of mentioned exactly what I w- would suggest as well. If you are a vendor, if you have, especially like shelving, things like that, if you are local, especially, come on in Friday and set that stuff up. That should be no problem. Um, the campus does have security, obviously, but... You know, when the event itself isn't going on, the security will just be the normal security that they have on campus. And so I wouldn't want to leave a bunch of product unattended, but your shelving and different things like that, you can you can easily you know leave that stuff in place and, and not um, be too concerned about it getting damaged or anything. Um, and then just come in and do your product the next morning. I think that makes like the most the most sense for anybody uh, wondering that. Um, just scrolling through chat, I saw a couple things here. So one person said, please do live streams in the gaming center. We are definitely planning on streaming. There's still kind of in flux exactly what the plan will be to stream, but I believe at minimum, we will be streaming the, um, Valorant and probably some sort of combination of smash and FGC. So like two different streams, one for Valorant, one for smash slash, uh, FGC. Um, Dan, I think maybe is in the chat, so he can probably uh, confirm or or deny that or give us any other updates. But uh, there has been talks of doing some other smaller streams, and um, you know, so we might be taking those other projects on, or especially if people are willing to volunteer to come on board and do those things, um, we can help facilitate that stuff as well. Um, anything else that people saw? Any of you YouTube saw in the chat or on our? I saw questions about Yu Gi Oh prizing and Yu Gi Oh prizing. You want to re- reiterate that, Jeremy? Yeah. yeah so, uh, both tournaments have basically the same prize breakdown right now. Um, there's a new set coming out just before the event for Yu Gi Oh, so I'll have boxes of that. But first prize is a box of RAO two, which is Rarity Collection two. Uh, they usually retail for about 150 to 160 dollars a box, and then second through eighth will be paid out a combination prize of Rarity Collection Two, and uh, the new set that's coming out. Awesome. Approximately about 500 dollars in prizes for each event. I may be adding more to it, but uh, the problem with Yu-Gi-Oh is when you're running an event, you have to. They basically want you to give out pack prizes, no store credit, no cash. So we're really limited on kind of what we do because, I mean, everybody knows that we have a pretty decent price for Pokemon or for Yu-Gi-Oh, sorry. And uh, we sell out quite frequently as it was. I had to grab the last of my rarity collection off the shelf. And I also had to put the last four boxes of the new set in a cart on my POS system because we're sold out of it already and it hasn't even dropped yet. <laughs> That's insane. Oh, I just, okay. I just broke my chat. Oh, I'm going to throw somebody kind of, it's in the chat kind of uh, on the spot. And I hope, I hope they're okay with it. Um, so pixel cat, I believe running our volunteer team, right? Are there opportunities still to join that team? And I'll come back to that later on um, just to see if, if you're still, you might not even be still here. So, so, okay, got a confirmation. So still time. So if anybody does want to volunteer, what would be the best way to get in touch with you? If you can let us know that and we'll kind of let, let the audience know here. And then I'll just keep that handy because I know that there's probably some other students and stuff that want to get involved. Um, and then while we're waiting for them to post that, um what else did we have here so we talked about this one so will the events be streamed yes so the stream channel for that is going to be this one right here saints gaming ca and there'll probably be a secondary at least at least one other second channel as well which is likely to be saints gaming ca2 um but we will make sure like keep an eye on the discord and on different social medias and the start.gg page we'll share it in all of those spots and uh and uh, yeah, we're hoping to stream as much as we can, and and uh, at least some of the esports tournaments, if not if not some other stuff as well. Um, next one here: Can I sign up for multiple events in general? So 
So I'll speak from the esports perspective first, or maybe I'll let Valerie speak from the esports perspective because I've been talking a lot. And then I'll let uh, Jeremy talk about how that might work for TCG because I'm honestly not 100% certain. From we'll start off with Valerie for esports. Yeah, from the esports perspective, uh, specifically Valorant, you could try, but definitely would not recommend. Um, you can probably find you know minutes of time in between games, but <laughs> Valorant, if you're playing Valorant, you're going to be there for the whole event. You're going to be at Valorant for the whole event, and you'll probably find some time to check out vendors and booths, hopefully. But in terms of playing multiple events while playing the Valorant event, no, definitely not. Um, for the fighting games, uh, we it's pretty common amongst the fighting game community and Smash community playing in multiple games. Um, the only thing with that is, just, you know, be aware of your times, be aware of our TOs, and if you get disqualified for being late to another match, that will be on you. But uh, we aren't completely limiting signups for multiple fighting games or multiple uh, Smash games. Um, and as for the side events, I'm not certain of the schedule right now, but if you want to sign up for multiple side events, that's actually something that we would encourage because all the side events are, they're all throughout the day, they're ongoing, um, some of them are just drop-ins, so definitely encourage signing up for multiple events there. So that's from the esports perspective, just this Valorant that you really can't be flexible with. And then Jeremy, if you want to give us an idea how that might look for TCG players. So Val basically said it. it is the exact same thing. If you're getting into one of the big events, odds are you will not be signing up for another event uh, at the same time. Maybe after that event is over, but not at the same time. Uh, it works the exact same way as the esports. Like uh, if you're in a smaller event, then yeah, you can sign up for two because you should be able to do it. But at the same time, if you're late, you're going to get a game loss. You're potentially going to get a match loss. Um, yeah, and as for side events, Val is 100% correct. We encourage you to sign up for multiple side events. There will be side events going on constantly, always changing, always more events. So you have the whole day to decide what you want to do and go after whatever you can. I did. We did get a little confirmation there in the chat as well from Betterson McGee, uh, Daniil, our TO for Smash and Fighting Games. Basically confirming, like, yes, you can sign up for all of them. Just be aware of your times and stay on, on your schedule because they're not going to hesitate to DQ if you're, <laughs> if you're late for something. So, you know, if, you've got, if you're in Smash and you're in Tekken and then you're like, I'm going to go check out the CG Realm booth real quick and then I'll be right back, you know, and you missed your game, they're not going to hesitate to DQ you. So just be very aware of your schedule. Make sure you're staying on top of things. Um, okay, I think we're caught up on the chat ones. Okay, so Dan actually also confirmed here streams as follows right now are Valorant is one stream, Smash and Fighting Games is another, and then Pokemon VGC as well. Although, you know, VGC is not going to be a, a points tournament, I believe, but I believe there's still like a committed grassroots community wanting to come and be involved with that. So um, we should have a stream there as well. Um, and then we had one here as well. Is there food at the venue? Yes, I did get confirmation. So on campus, right in the middle of this whole event, there is a Tim Hortons and there's a Subway. Tim Hortons, I'm trying to remember the, the hours. Do you guys remember the hours I confirmed? I know it's like 9 a.m. until yeah. 1 p.m. 8, yeah, 8, then... 8 a.m. till 1 p.m., you said, and then, sorry about For, for you... Tim Hortons, yep. Yeah, yeah, and then Subway's 12 to, I actually don't remember now. I know 12 to 4. Open a little, yeah, 12, 12 to, to 4, 4, something like that. Yeah, so you should be able to get your coffee, get your breakfast early in the day, and then in the afternoon, grab Subway. Um, the only time, if, you're, if you are coming for a long time, the only time where you're going to have to think about um, outside options for food would be, you know, after 4 or 5 o'clock, essentially. You know, if you're looking for, like, a later dinner, that will be when you'd have to figure out food. But otherwise, we will have... Tim Hortons and Subway open on campus, super convenient. If you haven't been to St. Clair in a while, like they're literally right next to all of these things we're talking about. So they'll be super central for all of the content for the event. Um, that, I think, covers it. So we'll leave it here quickly. If anybody has any other questions that's here in the chat listening, um, drop them in now. Don't hesitate. Otherwise, um, one thing I will post, and maybe I'll post this here, is an invite 
to our Discord. So there is a Discord built for this. We haven't pushed it out like very, very. Um, uh, we haven't done it a lot. We haven't pushed it a lot yet. But feel free to jump in the Discord and you can ask your questions there or just discuss the events, that kind of thing. Uh, learn some updates, that kind of stuff. Um, and we did get a few more here. So what's your underrated event slash attraction people coming out should be seeking out? I think mine, and this is just because I'm excited because I think I can actually have the time to participate in this one. But I think the one that's going to give me the most like grassroots vibes is going to be the night market. Like I think, I think that will just give me that recess feeling again of walking around looking at people's binders of cards and stuff. That's what I'm thinking. But I'll throw it over to the others. What What do you guys got? What are you thinking? Go ahead, pal. What do you got? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, for me, the escape rooms. I think having an escape room at a convention. I maybe maybe it has been done, but I've personally never seen that done at conventions before and having uh the chance to do an escape room right there that that just sounds fun like running around the whole campus like on the scavenger hunt or escape room with your friends like i think that would be fun if i have time to do that i'm definitely going to be doing that one i actually have three three <laughs> one is, one is the rock paper scissor challenge is right. just gonna be so much fun if you want to talk about nostalgia uh, the hockey card challenge, the hockey card tossing challenge, it's a Noxies tournament. So it's five cards gets leaned up against the wall. Two people go against each other. It's double elimination. Whoever knocks down three cards first wins. Uh, so that is really, really big to me. And then also, Brent had mentioned it before, the poker run. So I'll explain that real quick. I won't take up a lot of time. What we want to do is have two prizes and it's a two dollar entry you get a poker card uh that's your card for the day and you'll be asked by Jaden a trivia question whether you get it right or wrong doesn't matter you get a poker card every half hour we're going to move around the hall to different locations so that you get to see everything that's going on and we'll be making the announcements at every stop you'll get another poker card and you'll get asked a question at the end we have seven stops at the end whoever makes the best seven card hand wins the one basket of prizes. Whoever has the most trivia questions correct wins the second one. The tiebreaker on the trivia questions, if people have, several people have it, whoever had the best poker hand that didn't win and the most amount of questions right wins the, the trivia basket. Awesome. Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> you can already tell from our responses there's so many different things at this. We didn't even really talk about the, the tournaments, which kind of shows you the types of people we are. Where I know that uh, I learned myself I'm not going to win any tournaments a long time ago. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to look for other stuff to do at this event. But, um, yeah, okay, let me check real quick. Was there anything else here? So, Siri telling us Mario Kart time trials is the correct answer. Okay, so there's uh, <laughs> maybe a little bit of a bias to that answer, but we'll, we'll leave it be. We got a couple of votes here for One Piece, so maybe One Piece is going to go nuts, although both of these people, I think, are going to be stuck doing broadcasts. Uh, and then Danner's with the vote for iRacing, which we do have the racing rigs on campus. We can probably pull those out and get those set up if you want to try some racing out. And I also, Dan, I did, I, I did invite the guy who set up at our event um, at the Rocket League Provincial Championships. I invited him to come bring his rig. Like he's There's this guy from I think he's from Chatham and he's got like a $10,000 racing rig. Like it's insane. So I invited him out and we'll see if he comes and, and brings it. Um, but, uh, but if not, we, we have ours as well. So we could probably get ours set up. Uh, headed down here. Uh, there's another link to our start.gg page as well as to the volunteer application. So pixel cat posting there in the chat, the Google form for volunteer application. So still time to get your name in there if you're interested. And what else we have? FTC vibes close to immaculate. Okay. All right. Looking forward to those. Um, let's see if there's anything else. I think that's it. I think we're through. I think we're through. We've got to vote to maybe do a soccer game. All right. That might be a year two thing. I don't know. We'll have to think about that one. <laughs> so far, we haven't expanded that far onto campus. Maybe one day this event keeps growing. We'll, we'll take over the whole campus running content for now we're going to stick to the main building i think and then we'll see where we go from there but all right we'll keep that one and we'll keep that one locked and loaded 
if we, if we get a soccer game, I'll play. I'll play the soccer game for sure. Um, okay, I think that's it. Any any like parting words from any any of, uh, from Valerie, Jeremy? Any any parting words or last chance for the audience to get your questions in? My parting word yeah. is that the Valorant tournament is going to be really awesome. We we do Valorant at almost every event, no bias. Um, but the Valorant tournament always does well. We always have great teams coming out, and it's always just fun to watch and the energy of the Valorant players on stage is always fun to spectate in person um, and online. So we gotta, we only have a few spots left. So any Valorant players, get your spot now. It's, we're not gonna bump up the numbers, and this is the four spots remaining. So get get your registration now, and you know we can start announcing the bracket and getting that started. Jeremy, any final final words for the audience? Yeah, hundred percent. Listen. You may be sitting back, and again, this still sounds like, oh, a bunch of tournaments, a bunch of tournaments, and you're not good enough for tournaments. Trust me, we put layers upon layers upon layers of fun for whatever you want to do at whatever level you want to do. So there is, for the video game side, there is spots for you to come sit and play casually video games, have a good time. For the... Um, TCG side, there's spots for you to come, sit, play casually, have a good time. Board games, come sit, have a good time. We encourage this throughout the whole thing. So don't think that it's all this top tier level with a bunch of money and this and that. It is all way down, all the way down to having fun. So it doesn't matter what level you think you're at in any of these genres, there is something for you. All right, awesome. And and I guess I'll finish things off with one last thing. You know, there's still 10 days until the event. So if you happen to be somebody here or if you know friends or, you know, acquaintances or something, you're like, they should be at this event. You know, like maybe you know somebody who has a collection of rare video games or something, and you're like they should go there and show them off. Let us know, pass them along. We've got room. We can fit more people into this. Um, so we're happy to to give the space to people to show off what they're doing you know, sell their product, whatever they want to do. Um, especially if somebody's got an interest in running some sort of activity. If you've got somebody, you know, somebody who wants to run like a small contest for something or, you know, wants to have something interactive, the more interactive, the better, in my opinion. So if you know anybody or if you yourself has something you want to get involved, just get in contact with us and and um, and let us know uh, as soon as you can. But we've got time, even up until the day before. We'll find a spot. We'll get you in there. So. I think that finished it off. I uh, appreciate everybody sticking in. This is, this is a lot longer than expected. I kind of pegged this out 30 minutes. <laughs> and we're, uh, we're, meanwhile, we're going on an hour and a half. So uh, this went a lot longer than I expected, but it was fun talking about the event. And I think all of us, you can probably tell watching, we're getting pretty, pretty excited for it. So um, it's going to be a good time. And we're really hoping that this sets a, a foundation for the future. So again, once again, thank you everybody for tuning in and uh, get signed up. And we'll see if we'll see you next 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 Saturday.